Hello, I am Chef Diane DeMeo and welcome to my kitchen. Today I'm doing something just a little bit different. I am making something for the non-traditional Holiday Feast Club. I'm going to brine a turkey in a very Asian specific brine, but make sure to check out some of my other amazing YouTube friends because they will be adding their own version of a non-traditional Holiday Feast Club dish. Now let's get started. The first thing we want to do is we want to make sure we have a big enough pan so that the turkey actually gets submerged into the brine. And it's going to take about 24 hours for this to go through. But if you wanted to, you can do it for 48 hours. You can leave it outside on your porch, which I like to do in colder weather. It's like my second refrigerator. All right, so I got my nice, beautiful turkey. And I like fresh turkeys, young turkeys. It's wonderful. And it goes. Now, why do I brine my turkey? I brine it because it gives a juicier meat is that the right way? Anyways, it's a very juicy end product. And I have done turkeys many different ways, but for me, I enjoy doing something different for the holidays. Why? Well, because I kind of grew up in an Asian household, and so for me, I'm using flavors that are very, very traditional to me, and which might not be traditional to you, but I think you might enjoy it. So for my brine, I use star anise, very strong, has a smell of licorice, black licorice, but when it's in food, it imparts a completely different flavor. So we'll do about two of those. In they go. And five spice. Now five spice, generally speaking, you can get in any brand, it doesn't matter, cheap ones, expensive ones. But the key thing is that it has, yes, five spices in it. Cinnamon, star anise, fennel, ginger, cloves, white pepper, and sometimes licorice root. I think that was more than five. But you get the gist. It gives it a wonderful flavor. So I just add about two tablespoons of that. And the two key things to a brine, sugar and salt. About one cup of salt to a gallon of water. So I'm gonna put about five gallons of water in here. So we're gonna go with maybe, yeah, I'll do three cups. You can always add it. Sugar normally is white, regular sugar. However, I'm using brown sugar to give it more of a mapley sweet kind of yum yum to it. So in that goes. And I'm going to use the same ratio I did with the salt. So you're looking at about, again, three cups. We are going to add some fresh garlic and some ginger. Now, generally, most brines use dry products. So you could use garlic powder, onion powder, ground ginger, but I like using the fresh because I think for me it imparts a much better flavor. So we're going in for about mm, six garlic cloves smashed to release the oils and the flavor. And I will use a whole nub of ginger. Now again, there's nothing better, I think, than a nice, beautiful roasted turkey, mashed potatoes, your peas, your gravy, your stuffing, and my mouth is watering. But sometimes you just want to change it up, do something fun, and get something else going. All right, ginger, good. And then I'll just cut it up to nice pieces, and in it goes. After this, we're going to add water, fill it to the top, make sure it's submerged, cover it, put it in the refrigerator, and let it brine for about 24 hours. If you don't have a big pan, if it's cold outside, you can put it in a trash bag as long as it doesn't leak. And they have also brining bags that you can use. And do the same thing and just set it aside and wait, take it out, and we're gonna put it in the oven as soon as this bad boy is brined. My turkey's been brining for about 24 hours. I'm gonna get it to the sink, wash it off, rinse it really good, and get it inside of that oven, and we're gonna cook it to perfection for about three to four hours. And remember, when you're roasting a turkey, you probably want to go with every 15 uh, minutes per pound. That's a general rule of thumb, but you want to check it in generally also. And there is a little pop-up device that can tell you when the internal temperature is perfect for your turkey. So let's get this up. Wash it off. We're going to get it in the oven in two seconds. I like to cover mine with foil to start off with so that it starts to cook and the outside doesn't brown too quickly. Halfway through this process, I'm gonna to start to baste my turkey as well as make sure that the top starts to get a little brown. Some people like to stuff the insides of the turkey. I don't because 
For me, it could cause a certain amount of food poisoning because a lot of times the blood from the inside of the turkey leaches out to your stuffing and it never reaches the internal temperature that you want it to. And that can carry a lot of bacteria. No one wants to get sick on that fabulous feast day, do they? All right. My oven preheated at a higher temperature for about 400. You can do it at 450. We want to take it up that way, and in about 25 minutes to 35, I'm going to bring it back down to a nice slow roast at about 350. My turkey has been in the oven, and I've been basting it. I'm going to baste it one more time, and this bad boy will be ready to take out. We've got about 20 more minutes to go, and this turkey is ready. 20 minutes, time to take out my turkey. Okay, hot. Oh yeah. Perfect, golden brown, ready to go, delicious, Asian-inspired turkey. We're gonna let it sit here and rest for about five, 10 minutes, and then we're gonna cut into it and taste how delicious this is. Mm-hmm. Super moist, juicy, flavor-infused Asian brine turkey, the best. And I, for one, am going to make some of those other side dishes and drinks that my collaborators have made, and you can too. And I hope you enjoyed the dish that I've made for the non-traditional holiday feast, and I will see you soon. If you're looking for some unbelievable non-traditional dishes to add as a side dish or even another main dish to this turkey, you have to check out my Holiday Feast Club collaborators. Rosie over at iHeart Recipes made some sweet and savory waffle batter fried chicken. Noreen from Noreen's Kitchen brought us some German flair with homemade spatzel with parsley butter. And Denise said Didi Med, she made some aromatic Mediterranean rice with some toasted nuts on top. This is super yummy. And to wash it all down, guess what? April from Cook with April whipped up some fall-inspired pumpkin cider. And Chris from Caribbean Pot made some spicy ginger beer. Now we are talking. All these recipes are at a playlist that you can get to by clicking on this link right here.